you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, this is Mr. T and another tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing the highlights of function notation and inverse functions. Uh, we're just going to go through this fairly quickly. If you need more detail, you can refer to the textbook or other online tutorials. So function notation is language that mathematicians use to be more compact. So in English, we might say for the function defined as, and here we have y equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. We want to evaluate that function for defined y when we're given that x equals negative 2. Mathematicians would write that. They would write the function definition and then say find f of minus 2 or f minus 2 equals. Again, when we read the function notation, we read this as f of x or f of negative 2. So it's just a compact way of writing uh, our notation. So mathematicians like to have con uh, concise notations. So let's use some examples of using that. So again, g of negative 3 means plug negative 3 into the x in the g function. So the letters tell you which definition to use. And then calculate. So for this, we're going to be doing 3 minus. Now remember, we want to put when we put a negative number in for x, we want to put it in parentheses. So we've got 3 minus. Now negative 3 squared is plus 9. And we get negative 6. So this is the value of g of negative 3. Now this function is h, so we're going to use this definition. So we've got 3 times 0 minus 1. 3 times 0 is 0, so we get negative 1. Now the power of function notation is not only can we substitute numbers in for x, but we could substitute letters So in this and create new functions. So in this case, if I put a into the g function, we now have a function called that says 3 minus a squared. We can put an expression in for x. So we put this in exp expression in for that x. So now we've got 3. And when we put an expression in for an x, we want to put it in parentheses. Whoops, that's an a plus 2 minus 1. Now we can simplify this by distributing our 3. And then combining our like terms. And we can plug in letters, and we can plug it in x. Now, the x in this expression is not the same as this x, but we still, so we're going to replace this version of the x with that whole expression. So we've got here 3 minus, and now we're going to put the x plus 3 in for our x in our definition, and that's squared. Now, if we wanted to simplify that, we would have to FOIL that, so we get 3 minus and let's put this in a parentheses so we distribute properly. Now we're going to distribute our 3. No, we're, I'm sorry, we're not distributing the 3. We're just distributing the minus here. My mistake. So we have minus x squared minus 6x minus 9. And now we can combine the 3 and the negative 9. And our final answer would be that. So that's just applying or using function notations. We're just plugging it in. Now some more compact, uh, complex uh, usage of functions is to do what are called composite functions. The notation looks like this. We would read this as g of f of x. And this is the same notation that's used sometimes that means g of f of x. Uh, in our textbook and in my usage, we're going to use this notation. And the key is we work from the inside out, just like we were pulling uh, measuring cups out of a stack of nested me measuring cups. So we will evaluate the f of x first by plugging whatever x is into our f function. 
and that will be our output. And then the, so we got functions have inputs, that's what's in the parentheses. And when we evaluate them, we get an output. And you can think of the function as a machine, so it takes x as an input, it massages it, and we get an output. Now we're going to take that output from this machine and put it into the G machine, and its output, its result will be the G of f of x. So let's look at a couple examples. Here we have a G function and an H function. So in this case, we would first evaluate the inside function, h of 2. So if I go off to the side here and evaluate h of 2, remember we're just plugging 2 into the h function. So we've got 6 minus 1, which is 5. So this now is g of 5. And we're just plugging 5 into the g function here. And that gives us negative 22. So this would be our uh, result. Now let's look at when we do h of g of 2. Let's see if we get the same thing. So we first have to evaluate g of 2. So that's going to be 3 minus 2 squared, which is negative 1. So now we're evaluating h of negative 1, which is going to be 3 times negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 4. So this function notation is not like commutative, meaning the order does matter. And again, we always work inside out. Now we could do this as well as with letters. So we replace h of x with what it is, and we get that from the function definition. So this would be g of 3x minus 1. And now we plug, like we did in the previous example, 3x minus 1 into here. And we would want to FOIL this. If you FOIL that out, we get uh, 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. And now we distribute our minus. and combine our like terms. So this is the value of g of h of x, a new function. And lastly, let's just do the reverse. And based on what we saw up here, we're not going to get the same answer necessarily as we got there. So now we're going to replace g of x with its value or its definition. And then we're going to plug that into our h function here for this x. Distribute our 3. And combine our like terms gives us negative 3x squared uh, plus 8. So again, this is composite notation. Now the reason we're co covering composite notation today is our next topic, which are inverse functions. Inverse functions undo each other. And two functions that undo each other are called inverse functions. I drew a map here. So if function f takes x as an input and produces an output called f of x, if we take that output and loop it around and have that be the input into the inverse of f of x, its output is x. Now you could think of this in the cafeteria as we have a machine here. This machine is a uh, drink machine dispensing uh, beverages, say water, or soda, or whatever. Our input is money, and our output is uh, the selected soda. Or maybe the input besides the money is also you press the code on the machine for the particular beverage you want, and we get output a a, a beverage. And you could think of, we don't have these in our cafeteria, but let's think you have a machine, a, ref, a refund machine, in case you change your mind and you didn't want that beverage, you could put the beverage into the machine and it would give you your money back. Or I guess that might work. You go to one of the cashiers and say, I made a mistake, I selected the right item, and maybe you hand them the bottle of soda and they give you your money back. So those are how inverse functions work. 
Now there are two skills that we're going to use with inverse functions. The first is just testing and figuring out whether two functions are inverses. And then in the second example, we'll learn how, if you know one function, how to find its inverse. So these two functions, g of x and h of x, are inverse functions. And this stands, this is the math terminology for if and only if. So both of these things have to be true. If you take the composite of g of h of x, you have to get x. And if you take the composite of h of g of x, you get x. So in this case, the two composites give you the same result, and it must be exactly x. So let's check these two functions and determine whether or not they are uh, comp uh, inverses. So we have to check f of x, I'm sorry, f of g of x and to see does that give us x and then we also have to test g of f of x. So f of g of x we're going to be putting 3x to the 1 half into here so we've got 1 third times now we're putting 3x to the 1 half power and the whole 3x um, that's, this writing is too messy let's clean that up So for the x, we're putting in 3x to the 1 half, and that is quantity squared. Now from our properties of exponents, when you have a power to a power, we multiply these exponents. So that gives us 1 third times. Now when we multiply 2 times 1 half, we get 1, so we get 3x to the first power which is just 3x, so now I can distribute 1 third times 3, and I get x. So it checks out on that. Now we need to make sure the composite in the other direction works. So now we have 3, and then I have to put in here for my x, 1 third x squared, and that whole thing, because we've, that whole thing is raised to the 1 half power. My 3 times the 1 third inside the parentheses just gives me x squared, which is raised to the 1 half power. Again, I have a power to a power. I multiply my exponents, so I get x to the first, which is just x. So since on both composites I got x, these two functions are inverses. Let's check the next pair. So let's check f of g of x. So that's going to be 2 times, now I've got 1 half x plus 1, minus 1. I distribute my 2, it gives me x plus 2, and then minus 1, and I get x plus 1. So that's not a plain x, so f and g are not, whoops, can't write today. And g are not inverses. And up here, f and g are inverses. Now our last skill here for the video to wrap up is we want to be, find the function that would be the inverse of f of x. So in this case, we use this example over here. Now this one was not the inverse of that, so we want to find what is the inverse of that function. Now the procedure that we can do is we are going to replace f of x with y and write this in y notation. So let's do that first, our step one. Now everywhere we have an x, we're going to call it y, and every place we have a y, we're going to call it x. So we're going to swap the letters. So let me just change the color here because we now have a new function. These two functions are not equivalent. This function, when we solve it for y, is going to be the inverse function. So if we solve that for y, we are adding 1, and then have to divide by 2, and we have to divide that whole thing by 2. So we get y equals x plus 1 over 2. And now we put it in function notation. So this is the inverse of f of x, so it would be f 
inverse of x equals x plus 1 over 2. If we want to check that just to show that they are inverses, we can evaluate f of f inverse of x and make sure that we get just x. So here, f inverse is here, so we would be doing 2 times x plus 1 over 2 minus 1. Here we can multiply and cancel those 2's out, so we've got x plus 1 minus 1, which is x, so it checks out. And I'm not going to show it here, but if I did f inverse of f of x, that would also come out to be just x. That would work out. So good luck working with function notation, composite functions, and inverse functions. See you around. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready?